So I think the best way to describe a Sanjay Lila Pansali film would be a painting in motion. His films are a painting in motion. Hi guys, I'm Tess and welcome back to my YouTube channel. talk about Sanjay Lila Pansali and his aesthetic and the most beautiful and grand costumes in his films. Sanjay Lila Pansali has created a brand of cinema that is uniquely his own. He could tell a story from any time period in any particular location and the beauty of that Pansali film will remain unmatched. TikTok and Instagram are filled with video edits of the Sanjay Lila Pansali aesthetic showcasing the songs, the dance, the costumes, and the actors presented by Sanjay Lila Bansali in his films. Leading ladies are dressed in the most beautiful and extravagant costumes that just enhances the storytelling of the film. So in this video, I want to consider some of the most beautiful outfits worn by the leading ladies of his films, such as this lavender lenga worn by Ashwarya Rai in Hum Dil De Chuke Sanam, or Gangubai's white saris as worn by Alia Bhatt or the very extravagant and regal lenga worn by Deepika Padukone as Rani Padmavati. So interestingly, in a 2015 film companion interview, Sanjay Lila Bansali said that if he had to describe his own Sanjay Lila Bansali heroine, she would be the fictional love child of Meena Kumari and Guru Dutt. Before we really consider these film costumes in detail, I want to explore the Bansali aesthetic as we understand it in pop culture today. Aesthetic, according to dictionary.com, refers to generally what is considered beautiful. In popular culture today, an aesthetic refers to the overall style of someone or something, be it interior design, fashion, or even a social media presence. However, despite seeming like a very new or contemporary reference, the term aesthetic was actually coined by the 18th century German philosopher Alexander Baumgarten. He coined the term aesthetics to mean the study of good and bad taste, linking good taste with beauty. Treated in ancient and modern philosophy alike, aesthetics considers how humans experience and appreciate beauty, art, and taste. Many social media sites use the term in popular culture to cultivate blogs with a particular look or feel, be it the dark or light academia aesthetic, cottagecore, or the minimal aesthetic. In an interview with Anupama Chopra for Film Companion in 2019, Sanjay Lila Banzali described his hunger for beauty, and he said regarding his films, I want to find beauty. It's a lot of effort. Nothing else matters. What matters is how do I create that one moment of beauty in a frame within which I also tell my story and it tells something about the characters, how those characters feel. The frame is sacrosanct. Goes on to explain in that interview how in his films he creates his own worlds. Sanjay Bansali is probably my favorite male Indian director and that's for many reasons. I've watched films like Guzarish, Padmavat, Baji Ramastani and Devdas more times than I can count. And a very significant part of his aesthetic that he is known for is the very opulent dance sequences in his films. They include, for example, these amazing top shots of the usually the leading actress and the dancers. He has very grand sets and costumes and very soulful music in his films. But Pansali has also received criticism during his career for his style of filmmaking and his aesthetic. Some critics find fault in his films for being too grand, repetitive, or lacking in any complicated narratives. At this point, I do not agree with most critics of Sanjay Lila Bansali because he has developed an aesthetic that is uniquely his own in Indian cinema, and in effect, his films have become a form of visual art as well. It's important to note that he credits his own influences as legendary Indian film directors like K. Asif, who gave us Mughal Azam, and Kamal Amruhi, who gave us Pakiza. And this is pretty evident 
evident in his films, the Indian artists that are his influences created films, music and dance sequences that were specifically produced and fashioned by and for Indian cinema. And he continues this legacy that is left by these legendary directors, musicians, dancers and artists. Also, I loved this homage to Pakiza in Devdas, where the leading actress places her hair in the fountain. I had to point it out if anybody missed it. Also, I think it's pretty obvious at this point that the goal of a Sanjay Leela Bansali film is not to be realistic. He's very clear in his interviews. His films are not slice of life films. They are not about social issues. They are not the Yash Raj type of filmmaking or documentaries. However, despite not depicting precise reality in his films, the narratives of his films have a very real emotional reality. He fully explores human emotions such as pride, love, lust, envy, grief, jealousy or anger through the characters and the story. The aesthetic, be it the choice of music, the set design or the costumes of the film is uniquely his own and he does this in ways that other filmmakers simply cannot. His films are also more layered than just the story or the narrative alone. The details that are found in the choice of music or the clothing, the set design and the overall mood of the film can be used to find deeper meaning and various interpretations of the film story. The elements of the Bansali aesthetic are generally a very maximalist style of filmmaking with fantasy and a particular mood for the film. The world that he creates on screen is an imagined world and he uses aesthetic through lighting, editing, set design and costumes and music to construct his own vision. In this way, the costumes of his films have very significant meaning to the story that is being told in his films. Sanjay Lila Bansali generally tends to work with very well established Indian designers to design the costumes for his films. Let's take a look at some of the most beautiful costumes for the leading ladies of the Sanjay Lila Bansali film universe. Alia Bhatt as Gangubai in Gangubai Kathiawadi in 2022. This film is actually based on the true story of the real Gangubai and it was adapted from the very short chapter in the book Mafia Queens of Mumbai by Hussein Zaidi. The book actually gave direction regarding how the real life Gangubai dressed and there is in fact a photograph of the real life Gangubai in the book and it's also available online for reference. The book sets out that the real Gangubai was known to wear white saris, usually with gold borders, gold jewelry. She also had an artificial gold tooth, gold rimmed glasses and gold button blouses. We also see from the photograph contained in the book that she wore a very large bright red bindi. A lot of these details were incorporated into the costumes of this film and gave Gangubai a very memorable look. I think if there's any final takeaway regarding the costumes of this film, it would be Gangubai's white saris. For an interview with the voice of fashion, the credited costume designer of this film, Sheetal Sharma stated regarding Gangubai's white saris. I got 60 to 65 saris in white. I did hassle Sanjay Lila Bansali and said that white can get monotonous. He responded that even white has shades. That big dialogue in the film in which Afsan, Gangubai's love interest in the film, played by Shantanu Maheshwari and Gangubai, discuss hues of white, stemmed from a discussion during a costume meeting. I really had to work hard to find these distinct white saris. The sari she wears in the song with Afshan, for instance, begins with the dialogue Gangu Chand hai. This sari was sourced from an antique store in Jodhpur. It had silver thread work all over and had a subtle sheen to it. It was the perfect way 
to express the idea of Gangu being a glow like the moon. I got it for 1.25 lakhs and then we had to restore it as it was tattered in places. Sanjay Lila Banzali shot this song last as he was scared it might get damaged. It is now part of his private collection. I loved Gangu Bai's white saris in the film and that's such an amazing story to kind of know about. Credited costume designer added that. The Ajrak and silver jewelry Alia wears initially is for the time when she is in Katyavad. It's a nod to her origins. Then later when she comes to Kamathipura, there are these muted colors. I researched and found images of Kamathipura where women were wearing petticoat skirts and blouses with a dupatta casually thrown over. The first look that I created for her in that setting was the mustard petticoat and teal blouse. That became the poster. I really loved the white saris that um, Gangubai wore in this film. There were subtle differences between them, but you could notice them as we moved through her journey in the film. Ashwarya Rai's Lavender Lenga in Hamdil De Chike Sanam. I think that for many Bollywood lovers, myself included, this lavender lenga worn by Ashwarya Rai that has this hand embroidered silver details or this song from Hamdil De Chike Sanam became a rite of passage want kind of outfit. Dream Lenga, it was a canon event for many of us. Amdil De Chike Sanam was Sanjirila Bansali's second film as a director and it brought together a very powerful cast of Ashwarya Rai, Salman Khan and Ajay Devgan. Ashwarya Rai would later become a muse of Bansali uh, for years. So this film is loosely based on a Bengali novel by Matrey Devi. The song was set during Karvachod, so of course the moonlight and the moon was in focus in it. And interestingly, the similarities in the aesthetics of the song can be compared with the song Morepia from Devdas in 2002, with a similar kind of romantic feel, a focus on the moonlight, and again Ashwarya Rai in a lavender outfit as Parvati. A costume designer for Hamdil De Chukya Sanam was Nita Lula, Shabina Khan and Alan Gill for the dancers and Nita Lula reportedly said about this lavender lenga in Hamdil De Chuke Sanam. I didn't want to steer away attention from Ashwarya's face and expressions. The outfit complemented the background of the night skies. This lavender lenga was reportedly hand embroidered in Nita Lula's studio to make sure it had the perfect amount of shimmer for Ashwarya Rai. So a second memorable outfit for this film was the aquamarine lenga that Ashwarya Rai wore for this dance song. According to reports, Nita Lula revealed that the aquamarine color was not the first choice for the lenga of the song. And I think if you kind of look at the background dances and the set decor, um, lime was more present. So after she did intensive research, she found this particular shade for Ashwarya Rai. Reportedly, there was an extensive discussion that took place on which color Ashwarya Rai would wear for this song. Rosh Khan, Sanjay Labansali, and Nitin Desai, the art director of the film, envisioned a lime green lenga on Ashwarya for this song. But Nita Lula revealed that she was convinced that the aquamarine color would be the most outstanding and the best. And she was right. Deepika Padukone as Rani Padmavati in the Ghumar song. Put this outfit into perspective, this film was set in the 13th or 14th century in medieval Rajasthan and there are so many regal outfits in this film but I wanted to focus on the Ghumar song outfit worn by Deepika Padukone because it is so rich in history and tradition. The credited costume designers of this film are Rumpel and Harpreet. They are couturiers known for their opulent bridal creations. Chandrakant Sonavane, Ajay Kumar, background and Maxima Basu for the supporting cast. According to the book 100 Iconic Bollywood Costumes, Rumpel and Harpreet created two collections based on this era. So they were the perfect fit for this film. The outfit that Deepika wore in Gumar weighs well over 15 kgs and it took 8,000 hours of work and the work of 24 skilled craftsmen to create this epic ensemble. Designers did extensive research on how the royal costumes of that place and time might have looked and the motifs of this lenga were inspired by old Pichwai fabrics. According to a 2019 Vogue India article, 
Arukon completed the look with traditional jewelry designed by Tanishk with ornaments that are traditionally worn by Rajasthani women, including a triple borla, matapati, and baju band. Ashwarya Rai as Sofia D'Souza in Guzarish. Credited costume designer for Ashwarya Rai in this film was none other than Sabya Sachi. He reportedly said that he got some backlash for these costumes for Guzarish and the criticism was basically that she was meant to be a nurse and she was somewhat overdressed but Sabya Sachi stated that as a costume designer he had to pay homage to the director's artistic vision. In describing Ashwarya Rai's wardrobe in this film Sabya Sachi said to the Telegraph India that 37 long frocks, 4 dumpy shoes and 1 red lipstick. As I said earlier, she is wearing some really strange clothes. He smiles. They are maxis, aprons with motifs of cutlery. She has quirky glasses and red lips. She has some surreal hairdos and quirky jewellery. Her silhouettes are prim, but the design details like embroidery are like fantasy. In one scene, she is shown embroidering her clothes, so it is hinted that she could be a seamstress too. He added further that For the look test, I went over with three things Dark gothic nail paint from Chanel A YSL red lipstick and glasses She, Ashwarya Rai, was sitting in her jeans and t-shirt Talking to Sanjay And I quietly asked someone to braid her hair I don't like to over intellectualize a look It has to be very intuitive so what I found really interesting after looking into this was that the jewelry that Ashwarya Rai wears in the film were all custom made and Sabya Sachi also said that there are many nuances of Frida Kahlo in the film. The braid is synonymous with her. Madhuri Dixit as Chandramukhi in Devdas Sanjilila Bansali's Devdas was, at the time of its release, one of the most expensive Bollywood films ever made. The credited costume designers of the film were Nita Lula, Abu Jani Sandeep Khosla, and Reza Sharifi, and they all received national awards for best costume design for their work on this film. And there are so many beautiful outfits from this film for Ashwarya, for Shah Rukh Khan and for Chandramukhi but I want to talk about two in particular that Madhuri Dixit wore um, as Chandramukhi in this film. First is the green Mar Dala outfit. So this green and gold Anarkali worn by Madhuri Dixit was my favorite outfit of the film and at the beginning of the song she's covered up a little and you can you would think that it's like a maroon material and then when she begins the dance she very extravagantly and dramatically reveals this gorgeous green shade that is referenced in the song as well and her makeup was in fact an interesting mix of both colors especially her eyeshadow so i recently read that this lenga was actually sold by auction and it's sold for three crores and this lenga is part of Indian film history at this point. It's so recognizable, so I can understand why it fetched that amount. Another interesting tribute that was made to this song and this outfit and Madhuri Dixit was in the 2023 film Polite Society. Uh, when I went to watch Polite Society in theaters, I was thrilled to see this reference to Mar Dala in it and Madhuri's green outfit. Seeing the main character, Ria, dances at her sister Lena's wedding and she aims to distract the guests. She despises her brother-in-law and she dresses in this emerald green outfit that's reminiscent of the Mar Dala outfit. She dances to the song. The opening notes of Mar Dala begin to play but in this film it's more like a threat to her brother-in-law which was pretty funny. The second outfit that I want to talk about is this gold outfit that was used in the promotional posters of the film. It's called the Devdas Mira Ghagra or the Marvel of mirrors. This outfit was a part of the 2015 Fabrics of India exhibition held at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and this outfit weighs over 10 kgs as a set. The designers said regarding this outfit, embroideries from Gujarat have always fascinated us and we work extensively on both thread and mirror work from the state. We loved reinventing traditional mirror work which is quintessentially folksy into the most fabulous couture. 
So this outfit features real mirrors embedded in the fabric using Zardozi embroidery and the flared 10 panel Ghagra took an entire team two months to make. But I think it's important to note that this outfit was not used in the film because it was so heavy, but it was used in the promotional posters for the film. And when I think of Madhuri Dixit in um, Devdas, I think of this picture immediately. Deepika Padukone, Priyanka Chopra and Ranveer Singh in Ram Leela. This film was set in Gujarat and this influenced a lot of the costumes. So rather than look at a particular outfit, I loved the details to all of these costumes that referenced the cultural elements with very rich textiles and an embroidery heritage. So the credited costume designers were Anju Modi and Maxima Basu. Deepika as Leela, for example, had such interesting accessories. And according to a 2013 Times of India article on this topic, the Rabari influence in the movie is executed by costume designer Anju Modi through tattoos, jewelry, and embroidery. The base palette of the movie is red and white. The tussle between Ram and Leela as they campaign for peace amidst the blood call of revenge. All the jewelry of this film was sourced from the Indian brand Amrapali. And Ranveer Singh wore the Kedu, a long sleeve upper garment pleated at the chest, which reaches the waist, and it is a traditional dress for the men of Gujarat. He also wore this Bagdi in the film, and we see the details of patchwork blouses on Leela, which is all very referential to the culture and the heritage of the state. But Priyanka Chopra, in her cameo song in this film, uh, wore something completely different. He had had a chanderi dhoti style skirt in silk and a low cardi blouse and it's a very simple white outfit this is what makes it so memorable because the other outfits of the film were so vibrant in color it was a very striking contrast and interestingly a lot of these styled outfits are available for purchase on the Anjumo the website Deepika Padukone as Mastani in Bajirao Mastani outfit that I really want to consider is Deepika Padukone as Mastani in Bajirao Mastani in 2015 and this is one of my favorite Bansali moments period. Ashibai was my favorite character in this movie but this song is just magic. Deepika, the gold set, the gold outfit, Aya song, it was just beautiful so let's talk about it. Credited costume designer of this film was Anju Modi and Maxima Basu for the supporting cast and the outfit, the set design and the gold elements in the film is just outstanding. The outfit looks extremely light and I think this was done on purpose and by design. Um, at the start of the film, there is a disclaimer that is made that says that liberties were taken with the setting and the costumes. But interestingly, this anecdote regarding this outfit is set out in the book 100 Iconic Bollywood Costumes. During her research, Anju Modi found a miniature portrait of Mastani wearing a Persian hat. And in keeping with this, the jewelry was kept Persian, which is why the hand ornaments were made without using precious stones and just with with flat antiquated gold. Mastani's father was a Rajput, but Anju Modi decided to keep drawing up her mother's Persian heritage for the song. The designer reportedly said, Ivani Mastani was Mastani's first appearance at the Maratha Darbar and it was only appropriate that we gave them a surprise element, a Persian beauty they had never seen before. So what I found really interesting was that you can actually buy this Anju Modi style of outfit and some other outfits um, of the style from the film. So if you want to, you can buy it. The same year of the movie, 2015, Deepika walked for Anju Modi's fashion show for the Blenders Pride Fashion Week, which took place just before the film's release. The song Divani Mastani was actually launched at this event in anticipation of the film. Anjali Bansali's next project is the much-awaited Netflix series Hira Mandi, and the costume designer has been announced. It's Rumpal and Harpreet. Rumpal and Harpreet have confirmed that they are working on Hira Mandi and these images were released with a teaser of the series. So tell me in the comments which Bansali film costume and film is your favorite and why. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a lovely rest of your day.